Erev Tov Chavrim, I'm Stephen Badun. You're watching Israeli News Live. A mortar has landed in the Golan. No injuries have been reported uh, thus far. The only actual article I've seen thus far is by Gilly Cohen. I'd actually seen this already on a news, uh, just a news alert at 9.41 p.m. Uh, a mortar from Syria landed in the Golan. Now, we know last week three mortars came into Israel. Israel has responded to all three of those. And now we're dealing with Syria supposed to be under a ceasefire, but yet mortars still falling inside of Israel. Just waiting to see what Prime Minister Netanyahu, how he will respond to the latest mortar that has come in. Uh, and at the same time, speaking of mortars falling into Israel, another kind of strange thing there is that ISIS is expected to make attack from the Sinai border. This is something that is uh, coming uh, that was actually first reported on the Jerusalem Post. Uh, also in the International Fellowship of Christians and Jews, they are also reporting the same uh, uh, news as well. But speaking on uh, an officer who spoke on anon anonymously said that ISIS in the Sinai Desert, an affiliate or Wiliat Sinai, had stolen various items from the Egyptian army, including armored vehicles, anti-tank missiles. He said that the weapons are expected to be used on Israel. The attack could happen any time, explained the officer. In the next six months, they will try to carry out an attack and try to do something against Israel, stated the officer. Of course, there is a major concern you get an attack like that, that Israel may be also faced with Hamas joining in on such an occasion uh, to join forces with ISIS. And of course, ISIS may be working with Hamas uh, for a planned dual attack on the country. And if that be the case, could possibly as well Hezbollah. Hezbollah has moved into the, uh, to the Syria near Damascus right now, uh, relieving some of the Iranian forces that have been there to uh, work to battle in the areas around Damascus to try to weed them out, working along with the Syrian army, and uh, which are nothing but every, every one of these groups there, Iranian soldiers, uh, uh, Hezbollah, all enemies of Israel and keeps Israel on its edge, especially as these mortars are falling into the country. So it's a big problem, no doubt, going on there. Um, as well, uh, another news in Israel, too, is that two uh, Israeli female soldiers accidentally drove their car into the Arab city of, the, of Tokarim in the area of Judea and Samaria, which is under uh, total Palestinian Authority control. And the car that they were driving was attacked with stones. The two soldiers managed to escape the area unharmed thanks to the help of a local Palestinian Arab police. Regional police will soon bring them back to the civilian administration, which is very it's sad to see something like this happen to begin with. Why is it that Israeli soldiers, they end up going into a Palestinian area, they get attacked, but yet Palestinians come into, or even Palestinian police would come into any place in Israel, they're not going to be attacked. And Mahmoud Abbas might, might need to make a note of this. I don't think he really cares, but uh, the point is maybe the world should make note of this as well. It is not a situation where the Palestinians have to fear anywhere they were to go, whether it be in Israel or any place in the West Bank. They're not just going to be outright attacked. But when it comes to uh, the other way around, anyone who's not Palestinian that ventures off into one of these neighborhoods there, it may not be very safe for you, unless you are going with a Palestinian. For example, I've been to Bethlehem, but it is with a Palestinian uh, guide. Otherwise, it wouldn't be a very wise idea. In fact, if they knew if I was Jewish, it probably would have been a really bad, uh, bad situation altogether. All right, continuing on in other news here, but before I actually go into this next news broadcast, let me just kind of give you guys a little update here on the uh, Mechodeshet, uh, the meeting that's going on here in Israel there. Again, I was down at the Amen house. It did in on the 11th yesterday, the services that they have been holding there. It's been very small. Not very many have been there. Uh, I did get a chance to speak to one of the uh, building guys there that, that worked there at the facility. He gave me a couple of the brochures in Hebrew, uh, but the brochures were specifically about that first part of the meeting that was from the 4th to the 11th. He did share with me, even though it has been pretty much kept kind of low profile what's going on, he said there are uh, musicians from all over the world. He said different places around Jerusalem, they will be holding 
uh, different events, but it's not going to be in one specific place. He tried to find me another brochure that would kind of give me information on that. If you happen to be listening and knowing more about what's going on, definitely email us at stephenbanoon at aol.com or go to our website, israelinewslive.org, and you can click on uh, uh, an email link there, get an email right to us there so we can see, because we are searching ourselves, we're asking, trying to find out what is going on with this. Uh, this ecumenical movement that is going on. And we will be doing a deeper, in-depth story on this as we put the pieces together, the puzzle of these things happening. Um, anyway, getting back to the news here, another very serious story that is coming, uh, that's being published by Sputnik News. It says, Czech party calls for referendum of countries withdrawal from NATO. Now, it is the Communist Party in the Czech Republic. They title it the Czechoslovakia, the old name that it was given back when uh, both Slovakia and the Czech Republic were one nation, but it is in the Czech Republic. It says one of the most influential parties in the Czech Republic is gathering signatures for a petition that would lead to the organization's, uh, organi organiz organization of a referendum of the country's withdrawal from NATO. Now, you know, guys, that may not sound like no big deal. Everybody might just say, oh, it's just a communist party. It's a bunch of Soviets and Russians that live in the Czech Republic. It shouldn't be no big deal. But you have to understand, this party is very, in, in, uh, very influential in the Czech Republic. But I want you to notice what some of the things that are being stated on this, and that way it might give you a little bit more idea of why this is so serious. As in an interview with Sputnik, deputy chairman of the party's central committee, uh, Josef Scala said that NATO pursues a policy which contradicts its official slogans. The policies which promotes increasingly threatened threaten security, the last summit in Warsaw that took place on July 8th through the 9th was particularly dangerous. They deployed the biggest military arsenal at the Russian border since the Second World War, according to Professor Stephen Cohen, an expert on modern Russian history and politics, the, polit the politician said. Now, one thing, you know, guys, keep in mind that this is not, uh, you have to understand, the Czech people have a passion and love for the American way of life and the American people as well. So even, even with the Communist Party here, they're not against the American people. We know this from people we've talked to, many of these people on the streets, uh, even the Russian people there, they love America. Uh, it, but the issue that they're concerned with is what the Obama administration is doing. And I think that should be clarified there. Um, but anyway, continuing on, the main goal of the party is to remove itself from NATO by way of this petition. The petition demands that the government would promise to not allow the deployment of foreign troops and their military equipment on our territory to not send our soldiers to the border with Russia, to give people a chance to decide if they need uh, to, to NATO membership through a democratic referendum. The opportunity they have been waiting for 17 years, Scala said. The Czech Republic as a NATO member has to take part in the alliance's military activities, the politician said, according to Scala. Such participation is dangerous and harmful for the residents of this country and doesn't correspond to its interests. We are drawn into conflict with the nuclear powers and they use us human shields who are supposed to be the first to take the blow, Scala stated. And guys, I'm going to tell you something. That's just the cold, hard facts. I mean, that's just the way it is. He's telling it like it is. And, you know, I mean, I know there's a lot of people that they don't like the, the stance I've been taking over this issue with Russia. They they say, well, you just love Russia. That's not the issue, guys. I'm trying to bring you the objective situation that we're dealing with with Russia. As far as politics, I don't know if I ever get into the political side of it so much in America, but, but you know, I've always been, quote, unquote, a Republican, but I don't really care for the Republican Party anymore. They've pretty much gone down the commode, you might say, uh, with the way things have been going. I mean, it looks like Donald Trump might be about the only hope that America has. But there again, I do say that with a bit of caution uh, because I've watched a lot of the people in the background that's working with him. So it does concern me. But this here is even more concerning here because we're seeing the facts are coming out. And clearly we can see Russia is being provoked. You know, and I know that 
Putin doesn't want a war with the West. In fact, uh, I don't have this up here at, at this point here, but one thing I did notice the other day in, some, in a CTV footage, Russia was actually moving uh, military equipment out of Crimea and back into Russia. That was yesterday, and I don't have a link to be able to share that with you, but I know I saw it for a fact. And I'm wondering, though, because the ceasefire agreement with John Kerry that he made there, perhaps that was one of the agreements. Would you pull some of your uh, equipment out of Crimea? It's making everybody uneasy. Well, Russia put it there because uh, Crimea, through NATO uh, guidance or United States guidance, I might add, was sending all their tanks on the border of eastern Ukraine to provoke Russia in the first place and the separatists that are there. So... It's, you know, tit for tat, so to speak. Anyway, continuing on, guys, let me, uh, one other thing as well. This is another one from Sputnik I want to bring to your attention, and then we've got one more article in closing here I want to share with you. Southern European countries unite against Brussels and Berlin. Another very interesting article here. Southern European countries, and this is those that are in the European Union here, uh, worked out a new strategy that they are going to unveil at the European Union Summit in Bratislava on September the 16th. And we're going to try to get one of our uh, uh, affiliates there to cover this that's going on because it's a very major story happening there in Bratislava yet again. But it says, during the meeting, they will call for Brussels to change the EU economic strategy, including revising strict... Um, Austerity measures and allowing independent trade policies for its members, the Russian newspaper Avestia reported. Southern European countries are also expect, expected to address the migrant issue at the summit, according to the newspaper. Southern Europe is the region most affected by Europe's wide problems. The structure of the bloc should change in order to ta tackle social and political inequality. In other words, what's going on, guys? Greece and even Italy, by the way, Italy is majorly affected. We're talking about millions that they lost when the sanctions were placed on Russia. Now, I know the throne right there is in Rome, Vatican City there, that kind of runs the entire NATO objective. But believe me, it's not affecting the Pope of Rome very much as he uh, has his soldiers do the battling for him around the world. But the countries themselves, Italy itself, the people in Italy, they're suffering. The people in Greek, Greece, they are suffering as well. Spain, Cyprus, Malta, uh, you know, all these southern countries down there do not like this whole sanctions on Russia because their econo economies are plummeting as a result. And that's exactly what Putin said. He said that to the world. He said it to the journalists when he did this uh, big meeting not long ago. He says the sanctions, he said, who are they hurting? He said they're hurting Europe more than anybody else. He said they're paying for what the Obama administration is trying to force on the rest of the world. Anyway, you know, a, a wonderful story in closing here that I just got to share with you. And this is really what uh, maybe some of the politicians in Europe ought to be doing as well to Obama and John Kerry. And that's what the Philippines uh, pr uh, president that's doing over there, Duterat. Uh, he wants to boot U.S. troops out of the country south altogether. And uh, he's had some pretty choice, pretty heavy-toned words for Barack Obama as well as John Kerry. He calls one of them, an, well, the S-O-B word, and the other one he uses, uh, take, as they say, the old Southern people used to say, taking the name of God in vain and called him a son of a B as well. Uh, so he's not had very... As they would say, he's not very uh, politically correct. But, uh, you know, I know there's a lot of human rights issues uh, that, that uh, a lot of people are concerned with with this man. But I do uh, admire his courage to be able to stand against the Obama administration. In fact, not too long ago, one of the uh, Polish parliament members also made a pretty derogatory comment regarding John Kerry. Uh, we won't go into the details of that, but it was dealing with some uh, pretty nasty sexual terminology and says that that's about what we do here in Poland and don't get the courtesy of a thank you. Guys, it's just, it's, I, I think some of these European Union leaders are starting to wake up that 
the United States is trying to, or not the U.S., but the Obama administration. I really need to clarify that, guys, and I, I always try to do it, so please understand me. If I don't say, if I say United States, I mean the Obama administration. I know the people of America do not feel the way the Obama administration is going. And uh, as it stands right now, maybe Hillary will not be running for president, but that just kind of makes me wonder who would end up taking her place based on some of the latest things that are going on. Uh, at any rate, uh, uh, they are getting tired of it. And, uh, but the, 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 the powers that would be, uh, of course, we see the political leaders in the front line, but you've got to remember, in the background, there are the, the elites that, are, that are really do run the world, and the elites out there, this is a big issue. If they don't stand up to, to Russia, to try to bring Russia down, to bring Russia as a part of the new world order. And I can tell you right now, guys, people like this Philippines president here, uh, this man right here, uh, Duterte and that of President uh, Putin. If these two guys here disappear from the face of the earth, something happens to them. We know there's been assassination attempts on Vladimir Putin on at least seven occasions already. But if anything's ever successful, who's going to stand up to America or to the Obama administration then? Who's going to stand up to the elites of the world there that is trying to bring about the new world order? And I know there are other countries that are doing it. Iran is one of them. So is Syria. You know, Bashar al-Assad also stands up to the New World Order and refuses to be a part of it. That's why his country is being totally destroyed. At the same time, I realize, like Iran, they have swore to wipe Israel off the face of the earth. I am not a fan of Iran. I don't care if they do stand up against the New World Order. They need to have a respect for Israel and its own sovereignty as well. But that's what we're watching, guys. Anybody that doesn't go along with the New World Order, that's who's on the target list. Anyway, I'm Stephen Benu. You're watching Israeli News Live. Keep us in your prayers there. A lot of things going on here in Israel and a lot of things going on around the world. Shalom and good evening.